Hello and welcome here to our awesome replay. My name is Tanner and with me is... Creighton. Creighton. And we are here to do a um, post-analysis commentary of our pre-release weekend for Innistrad. Um, what we have here are our feature matches. Um, first up, we have on the left side, Nick. Um, and on the right side, we have Grant. Nick is playing... Um, what I believe a blue-white uh, deck, and Grant is playing a very aggressive red-white deck. Yeah, this format seems like it's really moving towards the uh, aggressive, especially in sealed. I mean, you can open that red-white with a bunch of burn and uh, all the very good creatures that are low drops, and just outrace your opponent that way. Yep. Oh, yeah. Green's not. Or, uh, Nick's not running uh, green-white. He'd be running green-red. I remember. So we were discussing about how red is ridiculously good and limited. Yeah, red has pretty much all the removal and some of the best early drops, and especially in this kind of format where all that matters is your early drops and trading and playing uh, early drops that can trade with your you know four fourth turn drops is pretty ri ridiculous. Yeah, I know I had pretty good success with mine. I had just a bunch of beefier five drops and had some pretty good success with it. As long as you could uh, hold them off pretty well with their early vampires and not getting them to flip and go completely ridiculous. Yeah, so let's get into this match here. So Nick on the left dropped one of the Stormkirk Nobles. Um, he cannot be blocked by humans, and whenever he deals damage to a player, he gets a 1-1 counter. Um, so he's pretty beefy. Yeah, Grant's dropping all these uh, morph guys, which are all really good. Uh, they're not actually morph, sorry, they're the flip cards. Um, pretty much same concept, though. At the beginning of the upkeep, if no spells are cast, you flip them, and all of them are actually pretty good. I have not been uh, upset with a single one of them. They all seem like they all have their uses in this yeah. sealed and limited decks. Yep, Nick ca casting an enchantment here, um, giving all of his werewolves uh, plus one and trample. Um, looking at it also, uh, he can sacrifice the enchantment and give and regenerate all of his werewolves. Now see, this is a good play by Grant too. He's just, you know, putting on the pressure a little bit. He's not going to play anything turn three and he's going to flip both of his guys. I mean, the only thing he really has in his hand to play, as we saw, was the uh, threatened in his hand. And it just seems like a good play to get your guys a little bit beefier, put on some more pressure there. Mm -hmm. And one thing I was seeing during the tournament was a lot of people were threatening guys that were getting counters by doing damage to a player. So what they were essentially doing was knocking off a little damage to giving their opponent a bigger creature, which is definitely something that you don't want to do. Yeah, you don't want to have something that can eventually kill you or even block your kill condition. I uh, got was lucky enough to get a threat in my... Uh, sealed pool and pretty much every time that I cast it it was pretty much for a defining win or just to completely save me to give me back work position. It was one of those that you never really want to cast it too early um, as if they can stabilize the board you just really kind of get blown out. Exactly. It's one of those things where you don't want to use it too uh, too aggressively before you have the win because the second they you know they can counter it and block and kind of out blow you out there or you know anything else in here you know, he saves his guy, gains a bunch of life off of it, thins down uh, the other player's creatures there. Now this guy I'm really impressed with, the 2-1. Yeah. He deals a damage to a creature, especially in this format with all the aggro. He can block and attack all day and not really have an issue. Yeah, this format, Innistrad, it really seems to have a lot of one toughness, um, smaller meek style guys, especially in white as it you have the mentor of the meek and different guys that really benefit by playing a bunch of guys and drawing. His neat ability, um, for a lot of people that don't know, is he whenever he attacks or blocks, he deals one damage to um, the attacking or blocking creature. Um, so if they're one toughness, he essentially kills them before the damage step, um, rendering, rendering them completely useless. Don't mean to correct you, but it's when it's blocked or becomes blocked. Or blocked or becomes blocked, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so he plays uh, the creature that when it comes into play, target creature can't block, so he chooses the 3-1. So the 1-1 one, one can block any of the creatures, but it's going to die, and you know he's not in the position where he wants to lose that yet. So he's taken a lot of damage so far. We'll see what he does to try to stabilize his side of the board here. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm looking at he's swinging out with some trample damage. And it's the first strike one, I think, isn't it? Um, I believe so. Yeah. We're, we're still learning the cards. Yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry, we're, uh, we're still learning all the cards. We don't even know all their names yet. Uh, we know what pretty much most of the cards do. I mean, just seeing the ability, we know exactly what it's going to be. All right, so he threatens the guy. 
Let's see what happens here. And looking at Nick's hand, he has Moon Mist to be able to transform all humans and prevent damage. Oh, been protection from everything pretty much. Casting, <laughs> casting <laughs> the asp and, and conceding. <laughs> Yeah, Grant's deck was really good. I mean, I got to play against it a few times. My deck actually beat it most of the time, it's just because it had a lot of stall in it, and I was fortunate enough to draw against all that stall against him. Um, but against most decks, I mean, he, he got two threatens. All of his dudes were really low mana cost, so he could put them out there pretty quick, and his curve was just pretty much perfect for that. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, one, uh, when we were in between rounds while they're sideboarding or in between matches, uh, why don't you go over your experience with uh, the McCook pre-release? The McCook pre-release was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a new set for me. I uh, didn't actually research much of the set. I uh, knew some of the cards from what people had told me. So I was kind of going into it with a blind eye. Um, I kind of learned pretty quick that uh, my whole aggro control idea wasn't really going to work. I mean, I'm more of a control player. I'm not much of an aggro player. I can do the medium, but not really the uh, aggro-based uh, deck list. And uh, so since I built my medium to control deck it didn't do too well against most decks i mean most decks just outran it and i didn't have any real removal in my deck to deal with bombs and i you know had a three color deck that was way too man intensive on all three so i made a bit bit of different choices that were wrong in deck building and uh that pretty much, you know, kind of knocked me out of the tournament, but I had a lot of fun. I mean, all the guys down there are great, and the store was a lot of fun to be in. I mean, it's separated from the actual store where we were playing, so it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was pretty much in a very different thing in Limited because I didn't necessarily know uh, what all the best cards were yet, as it was my first time ever playing with them. I usually went with my tried and true tested of big dudes as much as I possibly can. Um, I pretty much had one of the worst curves humanly possible, um, but had a decent amount of mana fixing to at least help me out, and uh, just put in a bunch of uh, five drop guys into my sealed pool. I was fortunate enough to get two of the four fours that when they uh, turn to the werewolf side become seven sevens. Um, I got two of the devils that when they die they deal three damage, and I got um, two of the four four vampires where if your opponent controls a um, human, they have haste, and that really, really set me up good, as well as um, one of my really only good bomb rares um, in the colors that I chose was the uh, devil that at the start of each turn, um, you can return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand, which on a few games I was able to really combo off of and really help out. Yeah, my issue is, is I'm really greedy most of the time. I had uh, three bombs in two different colors. I had two uh, black bombs. I had the two black and two for the three three vampire that makes two twos i don't exactly remember the name um and then i had the uh two black and three for the five four flyer that at the beginning of upkeep target player loses a life and draws a card but my third bomb was the uh three green and three colors or six six that whenever a creature you play it becomes a copy of that so i was trying to do both of those colors plus an additional blue which kind of screwed me on my uh mana you know set I didn't really have that much mana fixing, and there were uh, a few times where I was uh, a little perturbed about how I didn't draw my three green. I mean, I thought I built the mana right, but it was just my own deck uh, deck building that actually screwed me there. Yep. Looking back at the game, Nick on turn two dropped to one of the mayors, and before he had a chance to get it flipped over to put in wolves every turn, uh, Grant was able to do a damage and killed it, and then dropped the hound that was able to... Uh, they were discussing before the 2-1 that can deal a damage to uh, the blocking creature. Yeah, it's a really good uh, creature, like we said. I mean, it pretty much kills anything in the format right now besides a few pretty big creatures that uh, Tanner was talking about. And here he plays the 1-2 wolf that can pump and has trample. And uh, that creature I've actually been very impressed with on uh, how much damage it can just get in by itself. Mm -hmm. And Nick here is having a little laugh about talking about how why a wolf should be able to trample. <laughs> hey, if you have a pack of them, they should be able to trample, right? <laughs> yeah. And this is actually a good call by Grant. I mean, even if you have a creature in your hand here, I mean, you can see that Nick's tapped out and that, uh, you know, he doesn't even have anything in play. Get in as much damage as you can here and, you know, try to get a, get a set where he's on the defensive here. Mm -hmm. And he keeps on getting in for five. It looks like he's now at ten. Or is that nine? We need to have a <laughs> recorder there. The recorder needs to be in HD so yeah. we can zoom in and go. 
So right now, Nick needs to uh, get a little bit few creatures on the board so he can at least uh, get rid of the wolf and not just get blown out by him. He drops the 3-2 um, that turns into a 6-4, I believe. Yeah. So he's looking on uh, going for that. So Grant here, he can he's able to pump twice and swings out. And then this is one of those that is, I was sitting by him watching it. And he has a the Inquisitor's Flail in his hand, and I was thinking he should have been able to drop that and then wait a turn on swinging um, so he could maximize his uh, trample damage by doubling it with the Flail. Um, that Flail throughout the tournament has just been ridiculous uh, <laughs> just yeah. for the amount of damage that it's been able to output, especially with conjunction with the other equipment that... Um, mills them until they hit a land and gets plus one plus zero for each card that hit the graveyard that way. Yeah, I've seen both those cards used a lot in the last uh, two pre-releases. I mean, they're both really good, especially in this really aggro format. I mean, you play a dude that it may not, you can play a bad creature and they could have nothing on the board. You equip it with one of those and it becomes actually a very devastating creature. Mm -hmm. So like a 2-2 two -two becomes four damage. A, uh, you know, 2-2 two -two becomes mill them plus, you know, four extra damage. Mm -hmm. Just one of those things where uh, you can get pretty blown out by it. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, Grant plays a card I'm not really the fan of. I don't really necessarily know the name of it, but in essence it draws you two cards and then you discard a card at random. Yep. And looking at Nick uh, arm pump of joy there he was able to hit um pretty much the only really solid card that grant had in his hand <laughs> yeah which is the major downside of that you generally if you're going to play it you sh um, should mainly just have land in your hand uh, and make sure that you put your good bombs and good cards um just on the field and out of touch of it because very often it can backlash on you exactly and here he plays another one of those three twos that turns into six fours mm -hmm. Um, Grant, it looks like, plays the 2-1 with First Strike. Is uh, that double, it? double damage with First Strike seems good. Yeah. I believe that's that one. Yes, it is. It's okay. the 2-1 Flyer with First Strike. So let's see what happens here. It looks like Nick's thinking about some things. Ooh, one damage and blow out. That card, I was not really impressed with when I saw it for the first time, and then I got to play against it and with it, and I have gotten more and more impressed with it in this limited format of this set. So Nick's hooking up his equipment, giving it plus one, plus two, and hexproof. Um, so he has a pretty beefy wolf there, and he's swinging out and counting up, and so it looks like he has this game pretty much in wrap. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be much Grant can do. I mean, he's drawn a lot of lands, and it kind of stinks, but I mean, it's, it does happen in the game. It's one of those things where you can't get too frustrated about it, because sadly, a lot of magic is kind of your mental uh, state of mind at the time. So. Yeah. And he shouldn't be too frustrated by it because the round before he was facing me for uh, to get into the top two, and I happened to in eight turns draw nothing but land and had only uh, five non-land cards in my entire game. <laughs> that kind of happened to me like four times Sunday yeah. too. It was a uh, it was very interesting. Uh, almost was able to stabilize game two, but his deck is very very aggressive, and it was really nice. Um, on the subject of other cards that. Um, you know, at first look didn't really impress us, but helped out a lot. Um, the format is very different than uh, M12, in which M12 had lots and lots of removal. You had Doom Blades, Incinerates, Acidic shocks. Slimes, Shocks, uh, Pacifisms, just tons of control aspects to it. This has very limited. Black has some decent removal. Um, green has a few creatures that like the Asp with Flash that can really deal with stuff. But for the most part, you don't have a whole lot that can deal with just a good variety of creatures. Um, one card that I ended up siding, sideboarding in a lot was the new unsummoned card at Sorcery Speed with Flashback. Something that, you know, at first glance I thought this was a horrible card and I would never use it. And I was like, why did I get two of these? I could, something could have been way better. And just using them as a tempo gain um, during the games was just greatly, you know to my advantage and just helped out significantly yeah and the aggro matchups especially when you're going to play a pure aggro deck something like that that gives you the tempo gives you that turn of you know i got in for extra damage and they have to play their creature again it uh, really sets them back and puts them on the defensive which is exactly where you want to be on an aggro deck i mean you don't want to be on the defensive at any point in time so those tempo cards really help you out get in there for that little extra damage you may need and can blow the game out pretty easily yeah another big factor is a lot of a lot of people were running werewolves, and you just need to cast a spell every turn, otherwise their guys just get out of hand. 
Yeah, and like we were saying earlier, I mean, the flip cards, I didn't like the concept at first. I mean, the whole flip idea was a little off for me, but with the new uh, checklist, I mean, you can run with sleeves. You don't have to worry about flipping them over all the time, and every one of the flip cards is actually pretty good. I mean, once they flip, they become really hard to deal with, especially in a format with limited removal. Yeah. Yeah, it was. there was a couple times, especially with the new guy that um, once he's flipped he can give all attacking creatures plus three plus zero. There was uh, one round that I played that he happened to kill me like on turn five just with swinging out for like 18 damage with a couple creatures. Yeah, that and guy that dude, really good. And it got to the point where I was uh, playing someone at a later round and I even had to give him plus two plus two and attack with each turn if able. That aura just put it on his guy just so I didn't get blown out by him. Yeah. It was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that guy's really good. I mean, the 1 1 first strikers that turn into 3 1 first strikers are really good too. I mean, anything that. Anything that you can play, and on the turn you play it, it's decent, and then becomes better as the game progresses. Those are the cards you're going to be looking for in Limited, and all of these have performed the fact where you exactly where you want them. I mean, if you're going to be in the colors, you're going to be running them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was, they give a good variety, and they make your opponent actually have to play out. Um, it gives a certain swing of tempo. Um, and like he was saying, they're just really good cards. They just buff their power up significantly, and you just get such value out of it. Uh, the one guy that I got and never once got off was the Ludvig's uh, test subject. Um, oh, I yeah. saw a few people um, I had him during the tournament and was <laughs> able to get him off, um, but I just had zero luck with him the entire time. Yeah, I played against that card and it blew me out pretty rough. Um, I mean, I bounced it once and then he played it again and beefed it up again, but um, the next game after that I actually had to cast my 2-1 death touch Asp and prey upon the fight card with it just to kill it when it was a 0-3. Mm-hmm. So it looks like here we've got uh, Grant played the 2-1 flying first striker and uh, Nick killed it with the one damage spell. And playing his 3-2 uh, wolf again. That does turn or, into or a 6-4. Yeah, it yeah. turns into a 6-4. Alright, we need to memorize these names pretty hard. We probably should. Alright. Where are we? Are, yeah, the Tormented Pariah that turns into the Rampaging Werewolf. It makes it so you have to memorize double names. Double names. Double darn it. <laughs> so he plays the 2-2 two, two that... I forget what that one does. <laughs> but it looks like he... Nick's flipping the turn. I mean, it's really good with those flip cards too because you can, instead of playing your hand out when you have them in play, you can pass the turn and easily just get it to a place where they can't deal with it and it's just one of those things that you know everything about what you wanted in limited they perform Mm -hmm. yeah and it can work out against you um from time to time like see here for nick he's uh getting his uh guy threatened and getting hit for some extra damage so he get took eight here it looks like and then he gets his guy back yeah grant's not really doing anything here i mean a threatened like that i mean like we said before, we like Threaten, but we don't like it to use it for that, you know, early turn boost of damage. It just doesn't seem as useful. So Nick plays his plus one, plus one to Werewolves, and they gain Trample, which is really good with a 6-4. Uh, it is now a 7-5 that yeah, I really doubt. Plus one, plus zero in Trample. Oh, sorry. Then it's a 7-4, but yeah. it still works out to be... A lot of damage output there that uh, Grant has to be on the defensive for. Yep. And as we were discussing before, too, it is only two werewolves and not wolves. Um, so something for a constructed set is not nearly as good. Also, I saw some people um, were running it and thinking their wolves were getting the buff when they really weren't. Um, Grant here plays his uh, Inquisitor's Flail and hooks his uh, guy online with his other equipment and swings the line. You can see in Grant's hand he has another Threaten. Um, which will work really good for him, especially with that flail. Yeah, Grant's pretty much getting to the point now where he needs to get him low enough to where he plays his threaten and just wins that turn. Because he's at one card left against Nick's, like, three, I believe. Oh, four. Nick has four cards left. I mean, Grant actually has two. But Grant's at that point now where he really needs to get into damage. He's losing the board here pretty badly, and he just needs to be able to blow him out with that one threaten to Mm -hmm. win the game. Yeah. And Nick's needing to, he's dropping the 4-4 four, four that turns into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, so he's hoping on the fact that Grant uh, can't play anything next turn and he shall overwhelm him significantly. Let's see what happens here. 
Yeah. See, the play here would be to threaten one of the guys, preferably the one that's unblocked, equip the double damage, and swing. Mm -hmm. And Nick um, right now is at 7 health, um, so he's going to, uh, you know, need to uh, be able to stop this, otherwise he's just pretty much out of the tournament. So looking here, um, I was standing over him. He was wondering if he could sacrifice that to regenerate his guy to tap it, but because it didn't die, um, it wouldn't. That doesn't work. So yeah. pretty much, uh, Grant's gonna steal his big guy. I want to point out you're playing you're wearing the same pants like three days later. Yeah, no, th those are blue. These are brown. Oh my bad. I, I have limited wardrobe. <laughs> All, All right, so, so he hooks up his inqui Inquisitor's Flail. Nick Moon mists, which prevents all damage uh, by flips. not, but flips all humans. And which quench only does seven damage. <laughs> exactly to the kill him. damage, which was the correct play on Grant's point, and I, you know, commend Grant for mulliganing to five that game and taking it for his win.